obviously today uh, you're all here for a reason. We have um, Colleen will be speaking to us um, on how to speak unprepared. Um, he's giving me my very first test of how to speak unprepared by asking me about half an hour ago to moderate this. So um, we'll see how I do. Maybe Colleen can give me some pointers after we get done on uh, how I did with uh, doing this little speech unprepared, even though it's only two minutes. But I think this should be a, a very insightful and uh, helpful for all of us when we get put in those moments where we're not quite uh, ready to speak, but we have to, to say something. Um, so the format today is going to be uh, very simple, kind of like last time. Uh, Colleen's going to talk for maybe uh, seven, ten minutes or so and present on his topic of how to speak unprepared. And then we're going to open it up for a little discussion. You guys can ask questions, uh, something's not clear, uh, or if you want to have a nice little discussion giving examples of uh, times that you've spoken unprepared or, or anything like that that relates to the topic. Uh, just remember this is a, a forum that's uh, about you guys as much as it is as it is about us. So um, with that said, we're going to turn things over to Colleen um, and uh, give him a little warm, uh, I guess I would say standing ovation, but nobody can see us, so you can stay seated and we'll give him a little bit of applause here. All right. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you, Brian, for a great uh, introduction. Uh, so today on our agenda, we have um, two parts. Uh, I'd like to say of my speech. One of them will be uh, training or this coaching, little coaching about how to speak unprepared. And the second part, I would like to keep it a secret, uh, will be a, a little surprise for everyone and hope for your support a lot. All right, so I, I'm trying to encourage public speaking, as you know, in the office outside of the office and today I yeah, will give you some tips, some hints on how to deliver a speech even when you are unprepared. Unprepared speech is called impromptu speech and um, like once, like Mark Twain, Twain once said, usually it takes more than three weeks to uh, prepare a good impromptu speech. Uh, impromptu comes from Latin and it means uh, something that is happening sudden, uh, that is improvised or made uh, or done without um, preparation. An impromptu speech uh, is a speech that you have to make when you don't prepare, okay? And in life, this happens at least once, when you attend special events like weddings, celebrations, or maybe you ask during the meeting to uh, say something about topic you know little or you don't know at all. Um, it may bring embarrassment, you may feel embarrassed, you may feel panic and be overwhelmed by storms or nervosity ready to escape in order to avoid this situation. Uh, fear of public speaking um, tops the list of common phobias and I just wonder if anyone knows uh, how it is ranked. Okay, so it's actually ranked above fear of death. So yeah, it's some of us would rather be in the casket than deliver the speech. Uh, but at the same time, others take the stage every chance they get, and most of the, those people um, get uh, to conquer the audience. So what it is with this particular fear and how do we uh, fight with it? What should we actually do? And I think um, some of you or maybe uh, of us will already have this experience. Some of us wonder how we can overcome um, this fear. And especially this fear is very strong. This anxiety is very strong when we deliver unprepared speech. Uh, there are a few options. Uh, first option would be to run, like Forrest did in the uh, famous uh, movie Forrest Gump. Um, second would be just say no and say no comment, uh, refuse to speak, especially this happens often when uh, you are approached by um, a cameraman uh, and a journalist on the street. Most of the people will just turn around and go. Um, or you could uh, pretend that you didn't hear that somebody asked you to, to speak. Um, but 
I think um, you, most of you understand that these are not the right uh, approach. The right approach would be to stand up and deliver the speech unprepared. Um, you will ask, how do we prepare this? And that's why we uh, have this opportunity, chance uh, to share. Um, I will try to share with you. My, some of you might have other uh, tips that could be shared also. Uh, so how do we um, deliver it? So learn how to be unprepared. So first of all, I'm not trying to convince you that uh, preparation uh, is not necessary because if uh, you uh, practicing uh, public speaking, you know that for any speech you need a lot of time to practice. Um, for, a, for example, how much time would you need to practice uh, for a speech of five to seven minutes? It's crazy, right? But it's actually one week at least. So you have to write it, you have to repeat it many and many times. And this is for prepared speech. But the situation is not different with unprepared speech. You also need to practice. Practice is the key to making it perfect, uh, making the speech uh, flow. And an experienced speaker will, um, before saying something, even unprepared, will take at least a moment, those few seconds, to think about what they say. And uh, it's, you need also this practice in uh, unprepared speech. So um, if you compare this prepared and unprepared speech, in unprepared speech, usually you prepare how to be unprepared. So you take topics, any topics from internet, or if you, like with colleagues, or with friends, you can uh, throw at each other like some topics, uh, um, any any topic, right? And uh, try uh, chronometer it, like uh, uh, time it, and uh, uh, practice. Um, like in Toastmasters, for example, uh, we have a topic uh, table topic um, contests, or um, where people are invited in front of the group uh, audience and deliver for two minutes um, speech on something that they didn't uh, expect. Sometimes those uh, topics are crazy and uh, really um, uh, out of this world to say, and uh, people are getting embarrassed, but you can get out of this. So again, I persuade you to practice, 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 practice as many times as you have, uh, as you have because to be a good in unprepared speech uh, delivery, you need actually to be prepared. Um, so which, what steps there are that could make, that could help you to, uh, to deliver a successful uh, uh, unprepared speech? Actually, this one, uh, this uh, steps were shared by uh, one of the uh, uh, professional speakers and trainers from Switzerland uh, whom I had opportunity to, uh, uh, whose um, trainings I had opportunity to attend uh, when he was here in Moldova. Uh, he advises to do the following. I mean, you could add some, you could uh, de uh, delete some, it's up to you, but I tried those and actually it helps. So first of all, try to be uh, in a good mood, try to smile. Nobody is shooting at you, nobody is trying to hurt you. Be yourself, try enjoying yourself. Um, try even to smile at yourself, have this attitude. Uh, because in the end, all this is fun. Uh, second, uh, try to use your internal energy. Try to use your vibe that will be transmitted to the public that is audience that is listening to you. Never, ever apologize, uh, saying, oh, I'm a bad speaker, or sorry, I didn't prepare this speech, because this message you, that you are trying to say to others is actually told to yourself. And uh, so you get this anxiety even worse, and you get blocks that you cannot speak. Uh, then greet, okay, so this is sort of like um, prelude, or like sort of, uh, introduction 
And then you get to greet the audience, be sincere, uh, look at everyone, be open, and don't ever start with thank you. Uh, because when you start in thanking everyone, usually you getting off the topic, you waste time, and by the time you end up thanking everyone, it's time to uh, just to, to sit, uh, to go back and sit at your place. Um, also, uh, Thomas uh, advises that we capture the first thought uh, and uh, we ride on it. We jump, jump this chance and we ride on this thought uh, until the, the end. Uh, so, because um, also in my practice, I noticed that sometimes uh, first thoughts that come in our mind are usually the right thoughts. And if you follow it uh, in impromptu speech, it brings you um, somewhere, so it doesn't bring you to the dead end. Um, okay, it doesn't refer to the format of the um, presentation that we are in, but when you are in facing the audience, it is important to have eye contact. I didn't put here also another thing that I like, it's vocal variety. A vocal variety also helps. Um, you should um, not speak like in a monotone, you should uh, try to uh, have uh, ups and downs of your voice so it doesn't get bored. Try to make pauses, avoid, avoid fillers that many of us have. Uh, fillers, these are, are uh, uh, some uh, words that we also repeat, like in my case, I do use, um, for instance, so, <laughs> try that I'm trying to get off. Um, and uh, in the end, try to uh, summarize. Summarize what you said and hand the uh, speech to, or hand the, um, the role to the one who invited you. Um, there are many outlines there. And you can search and you could Google them. You can go on uh, YouTube uh, that uh, will help you a lot to become a better in uh, delivering an unprepared speech. Um, one outline that I usually use and the one that I think I shared with some of you already is uh, called PPF outline. Outline, it's basically um, some prep. So it is the skeleton for your uh, future speeches that you would have. Uh, PPF stands for uh, first letters of, uh, it's like an abbreviation of the first letters of the following word, words, past, present, and future. So what you do, uh, let's say, like let's take an example, you are in a meeting and you're like praying that your supervisor, your manager uh, doesn't uh, call you on, on a report or like doesn't invite you to say something about some a report or maybe express some opinion on something, you are afraid. Okay, this is one case. Or another case, you are in the wedding of your best friend and he's, uh, I mean, um, and it's your turn to speak and you were, um, Okay, uh, don't want to say the word, but not uh, uh, conscious that you would be invited and you can prepare a speech at home, so you are invited to say some words. Okay, you could end up using those three options, running, you could uh, just turn, uh, turn your back, or you could uh, avoid it somehow, but uh, again, you could just use this outline that's presented here. So you refer to the past, you tell what was in the past like so when you speak about the uh, wedding at the wedding you would say something about your uh, past with this friend how uh, what time great time you had in childhood and so on right then you would say something oh it is great that we are here now at the wedding and we see uh, for instance uh, george and uh, lucy and uh, you express your feelings at this moment so it makes it even more strong and then you slowly go to the future. You tell what are your wishes and what you expect and, and so on. So in the end, we, even without being unprepared, you delivered uh, an impromptu speech. Okay, that's, that's uh, something very easy and something useful that saved me at many, many times. Uh, there are triggers that you could use that come with those uh, outlines. The triggers, are basically some starters or some uh, things that can uh, serve as uh, speech engines uh, or speech starters that help trigger thoughts, uh, generate ideas. 
Um, few of them that um, also would like to share with you are below. So you can say, I can remember time when, okay, George and me met first time in kindergarten, for instance. Uh, this reminds me of time when we went fishing. Um, when I was a kid, I was bullied all the time and George was the one who protected me. You know, so bring some personal uh, personal into this. People like it and people actually uh, listen to this type of uh, the speech. Um, you also could say, when I think of the past, I think of, oh, so bring it uh, some, uh, mm, com I mean, comparing, uh, bringing, uh, connecting pre present and, and uh, past. Um, also say about today and again, what are your hopes for the future? Um, one of the factors that is very important in uh, public speaking and especially in impromptu speaking is time. Um, remember that uh, any mm, impromptu speech should be no longer than two minutes. Okay, there are different formats, but usually like based on uh, opinions of many professional uh, speakers, uh, when you go over two minutes in an uh, impromptu speech, usually you lose the audience. Um, so in such a way, you have a um, higher chance that people will actually pay attention to what you say. Uh, they will listen to you and they will uh, be, I mean, excited about what you actually say. And also, it will reduce the possibility of uh, rambling or just uh, saying blah, 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 some stuff that people actually ignore and don't, uh, um, I mean, that doesn't have any weight. Uh, because in the end, less is more. Uh, as an example, for instance, somebody asks you, what is happiness for you? And you could say, okay, there is this song that don't uh, worry, be happy. And, and you can say a lot of things about it. And, but if you just stop, pause and say, don't worry, be happy. This way, people actually will um, um, have, I mean, will receive this, perceive this message as something very strong. Uh, because um, it is interesting to, to know that uh, in a speech, it's not just words, it's also pauses. It's also words that are not said, that play the, the end result to the uh, success or unsuccess of the, of the speech. Uh, so how should we structure um, these uh, presentations or should we structure impromptu speeches? Um, when you use PPF. So when you use PPF, try to speak 60 to 70% about past. Why? Because you know best what happened in the past. This is one reason. Another reason is because past gives you possibility to think in parallel what you will say about present and future. Then slowly when you pass to present, it should also be very like one, maybe two sentences about present, so 30, 20 percent of your time, and only 10 percent about future. So some, if it's a uh, um, toast at the wedding, it should be like just also one, uh, one sentence. One sentence. It's if you're at the meeting also, what are prospects, what are the solutions, also very, very short. You can elaborate later, but again, it's not the goal of an impromptu speech. Um, as mentioned uh, before, practice is the key. It is the king to any, uh, any, any, anybody. Like it's, uh, either it's sport, either it's uh, public speaking. So I invite you to practice. Uh, practice within the clubs, like Toastmaster clubs, if you attend, or if you don't attend uh, such sort of club, you can practice with uh, your friends during uh, um, some, I don't know, like a party, for instance. You know, why, why not have it as, at your, as a, uh, one of the games that you play? Um, so remember that timing is, uh, is important. Have a chronometer. Now, nowadays, you have uh, uh, we have uh, all these uh, phones that we can use and um, make sure that we don't 
go too too long. Uh, remember about uh, PPF, present, past, and future. Choose a topic important. Uh, this could be done. This could be done from internet. Deliver the speech and again practice. Uh, some impromptu speech topics that. I, I would like to throw at you, okay, some, for instance, why books are important, right? So, um, an important lesson I learned. Uh, the three things that changed if I rule the world. Why is sense of humor important? I mean, we could practice now if anyone wants to volunteer, or we could do it later in the offices with uh, colleagues. And at the end, I would like to recommend to you some books. Um, that actually inspired me. Uh, one of them is uh, by Thomas Kipnis, the little book uh, of speaking of the cup. Uh, okay, prompt to speaking, speak and prepare it without fear. It can be purchased on Amazon. Uh, also, another book uh, by Stephen Lucas, The Art of Public Speaking. Actually, it's uh, recommended by, by many. It's it's written in a sort of like as a manual, has a lot of techniques, a lot of uh, stuff that can be uh, taken and used. Um, so that's basically it for for the presentation. So I encourage you to I encourage you to uh, to speak, to deliver uh, the, the and pre and prepared speeches, and I hope that um, today's session helped helped you and will help you in future. And the second part that promised at the beginning uh, sort of, uh, intrigued, um, I wanted to share with you the plan that we have right now is to open a um, uh, Toastmaster Club, uh, online Toastmaster Club at BEC. So that will be a corporate club uh, for uh, colleagues that don't have possibility to attend uh, classes. I mean, not classes, but attend the meetings uh, in actual uh, Toastmaster uh, clubs in the towns they live. Uh, the format will be, okay, obviously online. Uh, then we, we will first try to meet at least twice uh, a week. Um, we, uh, at the moment, at the beginning, so to do the registration, I got in contact with the people from uh, um, Toastmaster organization. Uh, we will do like, um, uh, doodle um, 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 survey to see who, who would be interested to to attend, and uh, as mentioned many 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 times before, it is benefit uh, it you benefits that you can reap from this uh, club or from this uh, um, from improving your public speaking uh, skills are incredibly immense. Because it's not just about the way you speak, it's also about uh, the way how you feel, start feeling inside. Uh, because uh, you learn uh, time management skills, you learn how to give feedback, you learn um, how to persuade uh, people through your speeches. And there are um, so many things that I, I would like to, to, um, to share with you, but again, we are limited in time and hope that um, some of you would, will be interested and if you are interested, you can always approach uh, uh, me and uh, I can say, provide you more material, materials on this. So that's, that's it. Awesome. Thank you, uh, Colleen, for an interesting uh, presentation on how to speak unprepared. Um, I guess we have a few minutes left here if anyone would like to uh, have any questions or you aren't sure about something, you feel free to, to ask Colleen. If anyone wants to give an unprepared speech right now, this is your great chance. Any takers? Going once, going twice. Man, I, I, I can be. Oh, I can. oh. Awesome. Yes. Hello, Brian. Uh, thank you for moderating. Hello, Colleen. Thank you for the such interesting presentation and it's very nice to uh, hear that uh, useful tips and for daily life, and I would like uh, to uh, tell you a short story from my childhood, uh, which I think is related to the um, to our today's topic, and uh, it's about how to speak um, unprepared. Um, many many years ago, when I was a child, and when I was eight, uh, to be precise, um, I started in a in a quite good school, and uh, in that school we had we had lots of 
additional disciplines like chess, ethics, uh, performing arts, um, and uh, one of such disciplines was um, card playing or card games. And our local uh, television decided to make a short, uh, uh, to film a short story uh, about the school and uh, how interesting um, is to study in such a school and how interesting to go to the uh, to such disciplines. And uh, one day, uh, uh, reporters uh, came, journalists uh, came to our school and. Um, I came to my class and asked uh, for uh, two two pupils to tell about um, different disciplines. And uh, for me, it was uh, an unexpected thing. And uh, they asked us just to say a few words uh, about uh, school and about uh, maybe the most interesting uh, subject for us. And uh, me and my friend, uh, well, uh, sat at the desk and uh, uh, the first idea came to my mind what about uh, card games and um, when the microphone turned, up, turned on I told that that the most interesting uh, subject in our school is uh, card games and uh, I like very much uh, playing cards and I would like to choose as my profession uh, in future is uh, to be a, a card shopper. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and uh, I'm sure that uh, most of us would be the perfect card shoppers in future. So um, the <laughs> it was uh, very quite funny for journalists, and uh, that uh, small uh, film was uh, uh, showed at our uh, local television. And even uh, school director uh, saw uh, um, that uh, that uh, small small video, and then he asked my parents, "What that what that was?" And he uh, felt that our school is best in cut playing, and our pupils will be cut shoppers in ten years. Yeah, and that situation I remember very much because uh, it was uh, and serious and very funny for all of uh, them who remembered it. So, uh, Wonderful from, example for the importance of uh, impromptu speaking. Very, very good <laughs> example of why it's important. So yes, it fits in very well with our topic. Uh, thank you for, for sharing that story. Um, does anyone else have any any other questions or comments that they, they want to jump in about uh, impromptu speaking or speaking in general? I'm sure uh, Colleen is going to become our, our resident expert on speaking. So, um, does anybody have any comments or questions about the uh, the, the Toastmasters idea that, that Colleen proposed? I think it's a great idea. I think it's a fantastic idea. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a great idea. Colleen was excellent presentation. Um, as you know, we did Toastmasters in Tbilisi, and I would like to. I'm debating, should I show this to our Toastmasters, your presentation? Um, or maybe I could just keep the lessons myself and um, I could use that to beat everybody in the Topics Master sessions. You, you could do both, uh, Tyler. I mean, you could first you know, beat, start beating the everyone and then uh, sharing it with, uh, with them. All right, I'll do that first. That sounds like a good A couple weeks, I'll keep it myself and then I'll, I'll share it. But yeah, thanks, Colleen, it was really good. I guess I have a, a question, if I could, really quick. Um, how do you have any recommendations for getting over nervousness um, or anything related to that? I know you said practice, but is there anything specifically that that you could mention off the top of your head? So um, uh, there are generally uh, three things that you should remember in situations like that. Uh, try to get. Uh, center, centered, or try to, to get to the balance where you feel comfortable, right? So, okay, something like that happened, you should never stop, you should, should, uh, should uh, go on. Um, even if it's not the way you, uh, in, you wanted and you planned from the beginning. Uh, as I said, try to stay positive, uh, because it's not just uh, uh, about those people that listen to you, but it's also about yourself. 
So, um, uh, because the message that you send to, to your brain is that, oh, it's not com I'm not in a comfortable, uh, comfortable situation, so anxiety uh, grows, and then you cannot uh, deliver a, a good speech. And uh, uh, somewhere you have to remember that you cannot fail. Uh, this, this is not a loss situation, this is a win situation. Because again, this is a practice for you, this is uh, um, just another, another way to, to become better. Uh, I just wanted to encourage everyone to go check out uh, bfc.green. Uh, Colleen's got a wonderful cluster on there. Um, I've got my cluster. I'll, I'll put in some, some propaganda for myself. Um, but there's other ones too. Uh, Marina has one. Michael has one. Um, and there are a variety of topics from uh, healthy eating to um, there's one little kid enterprises um, about working with children. Uh, there's one on uh, sustainable farming. Um, yeah, perfect. Uh, Colleen's got his uh, speech craft. I've got one on writing. Um, so I just highly encourage you to check that out. Um, there's also an events calendar. If you look at the top of bfc.green, um, you can see what events are coming up, both for webinars like the, the one we're having right now, uh, but also other events like in Berlin. I think there's an, the International Green Conference or something like that uh, happening this weekend. Um, so there'll be lots of information there for you, lots of good information. Um, so head on over and check that out. Um, our next presentation uh, is going to be by Marina. It's going to be on the secrets of chocolate. Um, and again, you can stay up to date on that events calendar on bfc.green. Um, and we'll also send you out a, a friendly little re email reminder. Um, with that, I see it's 4 o'clock. So if someone wants to get in one last question, feel free to get that in right now. Um, if not, I think we'll, we'll maybe just wrap things up. Going once. Going twice? No. Okay. Well, we're, we're going to close this one up. I want to thank you all for, uh, for joining us today and throw a big thank you to Colleen for uh, putting together this presentation and, and giving this information. You know, speaking is something that's very important, public speaking, and I think it's something that we can all use a, a little bit of practice, no matter how good you are at it. So uh, thank you very much, everyone, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, a great weekend coming up, and be sure to check out bfc.green.